Mental health is a person's condition with regard to their psychological and emotional well-being. Mental illness refers to disorders that affect your mood, thinking, and behavior. We conducted a series of interviews designed to discover how mental illness affects teens like us and their definitions of mental illness. These are their stories. NAMI, National Alliance on Mental Illness, is a nonprofit organization dedicated to improving the lives of children and adults with mental illnesses and their families. NAMI promotes the development of community mental health programs, reduces stigma and discrimination, and increases public understanding of mental illness. My name is Kara Bennett, and I work for NAMI Minnesota, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, as a community educator. Uh, my name is Nancy Howe, and I'm a parent youth core, um, educator with NAMI Minnesota. So my name is Sue Abderholden and I'm the executive director of NAMI Minnesota. So mental illness is where it kind of disrupts your life, makes it difficult for a person to function, a chemical imbalance in the brain. It affects your feelings, your thoughts, your ability to function, um, can impair your ability to navigate through their normal everyday tasks. Just a different way of, of your brain working. So mental illness affects one in five people, whether they're children, Older adults, middle age, um, it doesn't matter. 20 to 30 percent of young adults that go into college as freshmen have some sort of diagnosable mental health issue. So I got inspired to work for NAMI um, for a lot of reasons. I think um, my background is in education, so I worked as a teacher and did a lot of youth work, mentoring, coaching, um, kind of a lot of education experiences across the board. Um, I also have several family members who live with mental illnesses. My involvement with NAMI comes on the heels of a 10-year journey of parenting a young adult with a severe and persistent mental illness. I became involved in NAMI um, partly because I have family members like so many other people who work here and volunteer here. My child lives with paranoid schizophrenia um, and he's 26 years old. He was diagnosed um, 10 years ago right before his junior year in high school. So through 10 years of navigating the mental health system, numerous hospitalizations, um, trying to navigate through, you know, finding correct providers and the services, um, I d just came to the conclusion after all those years that I needed to give back from what I had learned from my own journey. And so I do this work um, kind of in honor of them and because of my experiences with them. My name is Melanie, and I am the parent of two children who live with depression and anxiety. My name is Kaya Dijodi. I'm 18 years old. My name is Felix. I am 16. Um, the first people that I really talked to were my sister. My brother kind of knew. And a couple of my best friends. The people that were closer to my age were the first people I told. I saw little things along the way that might have been some some signs and I didn't realize that they were as bad as they were. I think, you know, they probably both dealt with things for several years before I knew that, that it was really bad for them. It took probably two and a half years. About two years. Before I was able to talk to my parents. Due to living with a mental illness, I really struggled in school. For school memories, my teachers have all been really helpful and really accepting. I get behind and I'm not able to catch up because of dealing with other things. And so I took a month off of school to do treatment and I came back and my teachers were all really accepting and really, let's not focus about what you missed, let's focus about keep going. I was just worried about people judging me and thinking that mainly that I was using not feeling mentally well as an excuse to not do well in school. Teens don't get help for a lot of different reasons. I don't think we have done enough as a society to um, destigmatize mental illness. Um, too many times it falls on deaf ears. And part of that is how our society socializes males. We're not supposed to seem as if we're weak or deficient in any type of area. So at some point kids start saying nobody's gonna listen anyway so I'm just gonna try to manage. Part of the way that I do this work is that I don't deal with mental illness. 
what I do is I deal with health and wellness. To get the attention that many young kids, young teens want, or teens or older teens, is just somebody to say, what is going on? Sometimes you have to sit in the silence in order to hear what's going on. I think mental illness is an extremely important issue. Yes. 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 I do. I do. I believe mental illness is an extremely important issue in our society. Because a lot of people have a very severe mental illness. It has been kind of stigmatized and it has been hard for people to talk about. And it's at the point where there's still a stigma around it and it's just starting to be talked about it more. We all have the right to be um, healthy physically and mentally. It's how our body works. Um, any part of your body can get sick and your brain is no exception. It needs to just be part of the way that we think about our wellness and the way that we think about our health. This idea of helping people, that's the most important issue that any human being could be involved with. I would say to anyone, any teens living with mental illness, that it's really important to speak up. Tell someone and Start opening up and getting help about it. Talk to someone about it. Talk to a friend or a sibling, parents. It's gonna make it a lot harder than if you have told someone and can have someone that can help you work through things and learn more skills. And you'll be able to help other people too from that.